Welcome to House and McCullough Uncensored. Right. We are back. We are not live. So, it's uncensored, so I can say fuck. And bugger. And bugger, you fucking buggers. What's happening? Bow Selector was great, wasn't it? Bow Selector was well good. A, a David Merriam one where he fucking loves celebrities! And he used to have Craig Phillips Can we make like a football clip. version of David Merriam? Oh, Would probably, it work? Probably. probably. Who could play him? Gas. No, because David Merriam's funny. <laughs> um, Andy Tate's got a bit of a mad stalkerish vibes. Yeah, Andy Tate wearing a neck brace or at a cast. <laughs> <laughs> if you're born after the year 2000, you go in. and he's just trying to get everyone to sign his cast. Basically, the geezer that plays Keith Lemon, who now I Isn't think funny. walks around thinking he's Keith Lemon, doesn't he? Keith Lemon was one of like 12 characters that he played, including Michael Jackass, who was well good. That was well. good in it. The Michael Jackson Jackass one. Was Craig, Mel B. Good. Craig David. Mel B was good. I mean, Britney, Spears. Britney Spears was good. Um, fucking, oh, what's it called? Ozzy Osbourne. He was good. Oh, yeah, that was good. Um, yeah, there was, there was absolute belting characters that he did. And Keith Lemon was one of them because he was going to have, um, he was going to business with, of the year with Fabio. From Leeds. We're not just friends, we're Fabio. Pole. We're business partners. And we're security pole. Um, yeah. That's why he was And he had started. the Lemon phone as well. Mm. That was before Apple got big. That was good and, um, shit. Yeah, so uh, Keith Lemon was one of his characters and for some reason he just decided to keep doing it. And then I think he walks around in like a, a zebra skin suit. All day thinking he's Keith Lemon. Yeah, he needs the worst of his characters lasted the longest, which is yeah. a shame. Um, I think Merriam was. Good. I suppose Craig David and Malby probably had something to say about it. Yeah, but do you know what? Did you ever see the one where they got actual Craig David on, and it was a tribute act to Craig David called Craig? He Davis. agreed that he would let him. He would. He agreed to let the show use his name, and then after a bit, he got tired of it because <laughs> it kind of ruined his image. Um, which, and I, mean, I love the fact that he's from Morley and Leeds when actual Craig David's from like Southampton or something yeah he's just from Southampton just an absolutely random thing I remember when Craig David first coming around and he used to wear a Southampton shirt on Did TV it? shows like you know Soccer M and things like that yeah. which was a bit weird and then, remember uh, when Soccer M was good yeah. anyway moving on this is House and Amicola Uncensored uh, thank you for tuning in on uh, Full Time Devils make sure you like and comment in and share in I like Jimmy um, Bullard though I like Jimmy Bullard but then they like had Lloyd Griffiths on it he wasn't great I would say Lloyd Christmas then Lloyd Christmas would have been good. Big G's a good addition to the goalkeeping position on Soccer AM. But besides that, like... It was good. You know, it's, it's always been a parody act of what was once a great show. It's never been... Helen Chamberlain and Tim Lovejoy were actually funny and actually had chemistry. Mm. A bit like me and you, some might say. Mm. No. What are we going to talk about today? Oh, just, I'm just trying to not make it football. We have to talk about football at I some point, do. Steve. This is why people tune into us no, I don't to get some relief. I don't reckon they do. Um, is there anything that we haven't spoken about this week that you want to speak about this week? Nope. This week being the week that Manchester United have lost against Burnley. Um, we've that discovered long... we're going to play Tranmere in the Cup, but I don't want to speak about that too much because by the time someone watches this, it might have aged this video a little bit. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about general things, Manchester United. Oh. Um, losing against Burnley is not great. Do Manchester United fans have to reevaluate what is a good season this season? Do you get the question? I do, but I don't think it changes um, because if we finish fifth, it isn't a good season. If we finish fourth, it's not a good season. Look, there's things people want things too black and white. It's a yes or no thing. It's a it's a it was a success or it was a failure. But sometimes there's shades of grey, isn't there? And you have to go, was it a good season? No. But is it an acceptable season? Yes or no on that maybe. But even that you're like, well, what did you really expect to happen? I mean, if we'd have come seventh after winning the treble, that's not really acceptable, is mm. it? But if you come seventh after coming sixth. Okay, you, you obviously you want to see progress, but you didn't see progress. Like I, I do wonder for all of the, I just grow tired of the constant sack manager thing. It's proven that it doesn't work. The, 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 the annoying thing with it in this scenario is now obviously I'm not convinced Oli is the man to bring trophies and success to Man United. I'm not even convinced he's the man to take us beyond this season. But when we appointed him and gave him the job on a full time basis, whether me or you thought it was the right or wrong decision, you appoint him on the basis that he's going to get time. 
Yeah, that, that was only nine months ago, by the yeah, way. That, that's like, you, you can't give someone the job and then and then say, ah, well, actually, you know. No, what was the remit? When they was there, there you go, there's a bit of paper. Um, what was the remit that they give him? Was it win the league next year? Because if it was, that's ridiculous. Was it come second next year? That was probably ridiculous, right? It should have been. Gets into the top four. But we don't even know if it was a like, right, Oli, clearly there's a lot of changes need to happen mm. in this team. So make the changes. And those changes might have been... I mean, everybody knows Lukaku wanted out by like March. You know, mm. I think he'd already decided he wants to, to get out of here. So you know that you've got to make all of these changes. Now, to, for the amount of people that come out and say, Oli said he's happy with this squad. Oh my God. Honestly, it makes me want to bang my head off walls. He clearly wasn't happy with this squad. I know for a fact he wasn't happy and with this squad. And he's got... There's a certain... What I hate about press conferences... and First of all, I don't watch them anymore. Second of all, you've got to always ask yourself, why is the manager saying that? Yeah. And I think a lot of people get caught in the fact that, okay, if you don't want Ali as manager, you don't think he's the right manager. Actually, that's fair enough. And there's probably a lot of evidence to suggest you're right. Yeah. Same way, if you want him to stay and you think he deserves time, you know, there's a lot of evidence to suggest you're right. But also, like, if you want him out and then using his statements in press conferences or a smile in a press conference or as evidence of why he should go is just irrational. Like, it's, it's why I never subscribe to being in or out, Jose and Jose, or Ali and Ali out. Because you never see, if you're out, you never see the good Someone things. And if you're like, in, you never see oh, the bad things. You Ali in or Ali out, I was like, I'm fucking neither, mate. A Manchester like, United fan? Yeah, I'd, what the fuck is this? When did this become a thing? Like, that it, you've got to be it's one of those things. It's always in social media and hashtags, doesn't it? Yeah. Because no one ever, no one ever, ever asked me in all five... When Jose had just come in, we lost against Blackburn 2 1. You Fergie in or Fergie out? Like, I, yeah, I remember two, like, I remember two geezers booing Fergie as he walked, because I sat in a staff stand as Fergie walked past us um, when Pedersen scored two. And I was like, what the fuck you do you boo? I was like a little teenager, like, what the fuck are you doing? And we started having an argument. It's like, no one ever was, Fergie, are you Fergie in or Fergie out? No, like, I no remember the articles. And obviously, I read the fanzines back then as well. So I remember reading in the fanzines people saying, this guy's lost it. This guy's <laughs> passed it. Dinosaur. All of the things that you saw about Jose last year. Dinosaur. Football's moved on. He hasn't got it. Blah, 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 blah. And this, we've got to remember as well. It's even more pertinent at that time. The same way it kind of was with Wenger. He'd been there that long that there wasn't a dinner lady there that he didn't appoint like, or wasn't mm. appointed on his watch. So you've got to say, like, that, that is a man playing with his squad in his image. If it hasn't worked in 20 years, it ain't working. But when it's a guy that's been... Uh, and do you know what? I'm going I'm to say he's only been here nine months, seeing as everyone only uh, likes to count his permanent record. So I'm only counting his permanent record now as well. He's only been here nine months. I don't think that's long enough. So, mm. like, did you honestly think that this ship was going to turn around? It took Fergie, like, seven years to turn it round. And he's the greatest ever. And he was backed by a manager, sorry, a, a chairman that actually give a fuck. Martin Edwards is a nerd of a United fan. Like, that guy will be like, you can go to him like, yeah, United start 11, 9, 40, yeah, FA Cup final, they go, ooh, uh, and then reel it off. The guy's a fucking United nerd. And that's who you want as a chairman of your football club. Okay, so as as we're saying billion. that there needs to be balance. Not everything can be negative, not everything can be positive. Okay, so let's... Have this balanced discussion. We're saying people don't have balanced debate. People don't have balanced discussion. So let's have it. Fuck you. Don't tell me what to do. Fuck you too. But let's have it. Like, yeah. Ali, what has he done well? What has he done wrong? Let's start with the negatives. What does he need to improve with? And what can he change? That, right. You know, there's things that's that currently I've, within his grasp. There's of things changes. I've seen that I don't like. Certain starting 11s. I thought he lingered on Ashley Young a bit too long. I thought he lingered on Luke Shaw too young. Uh, in face of the evidence that... Luke Shaw too young. Young. Long, little, little slip of the tongue there, thinking about Ashley Young. Yeah. I like Ashley it. Uh, too long. Um, when the, the evidence was counter, that there, there was better players in there. I think he's probably lingered on Andres Pereira too long. I, but unlike the Luke Shaw and Ashley Young situation, there isn't... And I know you're going to say Angel Gomez in a minute, but I don't think the evidence is there with Angel Gomez's performances to suggest that he can come in and play 90 minutes every single The problem game. there is there's no evidence in performances of anybody else that has been playing that they deserve to be starting. Yeah, that's so when point. that happens, surely you promote someone 
from within. Because yeah, if you look at Tahif Chung, he hasn't looked like... Now, he deserved his opportunity when he got it, but he hasn't looked like he should have kept getting opportunities. He has. Mason Greenwood, for all the goals, that's been great. His all-round performances have often left a lot to be desired. I disagree. And he could do a little bit more. But I'm just saying, no one's been perfect in this team. Well, no, and Angel Gomez. In the position we're in. And I think when you look at Andreas Pereira, he is someone that stagnated in the 23s, had a couple of bad loan moves. We could easily do that with Angel Gomez. Now, yep. I know we've got his old contract issue. He might not even be here that long. Yeah, and I think that's but, probably playing a factor into the starting eleven as well. To why he's not in the starting eleven. But then some would say Pogba didn't want to be here, yet we would have kept him around. Now, I know Pogba's attitude and stuff, it didn't go Lukaku-like. He, he was still positive to be around. So that, but... You know, we can't on one hand say we only want players that want to play for Manchester United, but then on another hand, contradict that. You're right, but that's what football fans do. So, Angel Gomez, you don't think he's quite ready yet? No, I don't think he's quite ready yet. And, you know, there was no one fucking leading the charge more than I was for when it was giving him his opportunities. But what has he done to progress since? You know, I swear he some... hasn't been given a chance. No, but I watch him in the 23s, mate, and he hasn't shone in the 23s. But that, that's where that stagnation, I think, comes from. Prove it, though. Jimmy Garner looks like a world-beater in a 23s. There's your, there's your counter-argument to that. Why would you give it Angel, who doesn't want to be here and isn't signing his contract over time for Jimmy Garner? Jimmy Garner, I, I think, deserves an opportunity. I'd love Playing to see different positions. They do play in different positions, but it's still the same thing. We're short of sixes as we are eights, as we are yeah. tens. So we're talking about those negatives. Um, you were talking about Andreas Pereira. And yeah, I think Jason team Lingard. selection. But th there's a mitigation on the team selection as well. It isn't like you've got fucking Mbappe and Ronaldo waiting in the wings and he chooses to keep picking certain players. You, we just don't have great players to pick from. We're missing our best players out of the first team. Our squad's extremely thin. You've got three number 10s who sort of excel in one area, but the, are lacking in the other four or five areas. And he, he almost has to, right, where do I want to not have quality today? Do I want to like have someone with a brilliant touch and vision? Right, one matter you're playing. Would I rather have a bit of energy? Jesse, you're playing. Uh, but when you play Jesse, you lose the quality, right? Okay, Andres Pereira is probably, out of the lot of them, got the most going on, but then his decision-making wants to make you headbutt spikes. So, like, what do you do? So you, you either you have a player that's got the ability and quality to get into great positions to make things happen, but he ain't going to make things happen because he's got the decision-making of a Lego block. Or you have one matter who's got the brilliant touch and this, that and the other, but if you're trying to play on the counter, he ain't going to be there. Or do you play Jesse Lingard, who's going to have loads of energy, but if he gets into positions where he could make a final ball or have a shot, he's not going to do it. So what do you do? And I get that's where Angel might come in, but the physicality of Angel is a negative. The the contract is a negative. And there's also you, his performances so in the 23s. Talk, talk, uh, it, it's clearly it comes back to personnel a lot. Yeah, it does. So do you think with better personnel, Ali would be proven to be a better manager than he currently is? Yeah. Because I mean, some would look, say, and I feel this as well at times, I feel at the start when he came in, there was a clear, the way we were playing, there was a lot of patterns, we were doing the same things. Now there doesn't seem, it's all very repetitive and then it gets sideways and then it goes backwards. We try and play out from the back, we can't play out from the back because we haven't got the players to do it. So if you haven't got the players to play out from the back, why try out and play out from the back? Surely you do something different and yeah, you, well, you, you adjust to what you have and that was a criticism that, I often put a Jose Mourinho. So we now can't not give that to Oli because, yes, we understand that the players and our squad isn't good enough or, or, or anywhere near good enough to be Man United, but the squad was good enough to be Aston Villa. It the was. The squad was good enough to be Everton, who but were managed by Duncan Ferguson yeah, running around with a sweatband and a suit on. It was, but that's like, where football's a strange sport because... There's never been complete domination. There's always crossover, and you have to have the the reason team sports differ from individual sports is that you can have a bad day and and lose as a a boxer or an MMA fighter or a golfer because it's all on you. You you win and lose on you, but you can have a fantastic game as a, a goalkeeper, say, and still lose. Or you can have a fantastic game as a striker and still lose because you're reliant on other people. One of the issues of having a squad which is devoid of quality, which is devoid of uh, every single thing that we need to be a, a title-winning team or even a title-challenging team, is that 
those inexplicable results happen because you're lacking the quality in all those areas. No, we were talking about 2005. Did did Fergie lose it? Or were Jemba Jemba, Cleberson and Mikhail Sylvester at centre-half maybe not as good as Carrick and Owen Hargreaves? And, do, do you see what I mean? Mm. Fergie didn't change. Like, the results changed because he the did, team changed. There was a lot of... There was a certain amount of tinkering we had to do to get better in Europe, though. And that's just... A small example, but he did have to change in certain places. He did have to change in certain games. We couldn't no longer go out and be as attacking in games against Barcelona. And for that reason, we had to adjust to win the European Cup. Now, I'm saying that we, we had to make adjustments from a league winning position in order to succeed on a European level. What about from this level? What is there anything we can do between now and the end of the season that isn't buying players? Well, no, the, that, ultimately, the players are the biggest surely thing. Surely that's where the coach is... Like, that's where you want to see good coach. No, I'm but not this, seeing... And that's frustrating this, me because I feel myth. like we've got good, good footballers out there, some some good footballers out there. And we don't... Like, if you look at when Martial and Rashford get on the ball sometimes, you can see they want to play. They, them two have a natural connection between themselves. But the team doesn't have a... I feel like... and I'm, It's an unfair example because they're the best team in the world at the moment, but... Liverpool could drop every single player, play someone else, and it'd still play the same right. way. Now, that's going to be a and myth. A, and and a, that myth's going to get perpetuated because the evidence suggests that I don't that's think it happened. is a myth, though. But if they did that four and weeks City on the bounce, well. that wouldn't happen. If they played their under-18s no, yeah, yeah, four weeks on the bounce. So people are going to say, issues. oh, they did play all their kids and they won. Yes, they did, right? It was a one-off game. One-off games do happen. They are also coming from a place where everything is confident, yeah. everything is positive. And that can have a sweeping, like, and the whole club, that can try and just take you through games. It can, yeah. I totally get that. And we've been in that position before. But the point I'm trying to make is we're not seeing patterns, really. And right, we're no, not we're not. But again, this goes down to, to the quality that. of player. If you put me at number 10 at United and go, look, here's the patterns I want to play. I'm, I'm not going to be able to do it. we are seeing, I, I put, we give the ball to the centre-halves, the hair, centre-halves. This happens a lot. They play a one-two. Try and find Matic or Fred. Matic get blocked out, get closed down, goes back to De Gea. De Gea goes long. We don't win the ball in the air because we haven't got a physical presence. The ball comes back. We're back on the back foot yep. again. If we get the ball back to the centre-halves, the centre-half split, yep. Matic comes, give it short, we're back in the square. And there I doesn't seem to be a, OK, lads, let's, let's bring him in here. Let's try and do that. Let's bypass the midfield. There doesn't seem to be that past the midfield you know that in-game... Oh, yeah, I agree on that. And I, I've highlighted that a couple of times on that five things we learned that we do. That when we get pressed, we got pressed for a whole half. When we was um, being shown up by Liverpool at set pieces, we got shown up by, for the whole half. We still was having Fred and Williams. Now, that, yeah, that's a totally fine criticism. It's a criticism I've levelled at Oli. The, the warm-up is something I level at Oli. I don't get it. I'm going to try and speak to Renny Mullenstein and just say... Help me out here. What's the fucking script? What's the crack there? I've asked a couple of Joe, uh, people that we know that like, go to press conferences and said, can you ask this question for me? Because Joe Rowan asking about transfers. Questions. Is Paul Pogba leaving yet? Yeah, the bollocks. But I, I would love to see an actual <laughs> football question. So <coughs> the question I want to put to him is, right, um, I've, I've gone and looked at City's warm-up. I've gone and looked at Liverpool's warm-up as two examples of teams that are the better teams in the country. They do not do what we do in warm-ups. The final thing that we do is we spend 15 minutes having shots from 20, 25 yards. Not seen that. Right? That are, yeah, so it's at our end. So um, someone gets teed up on uh, outside the D and they have a shot it's with no defence. It's basically a shooting drill we all did at school. Yeah, that's One it. One man on the edge of the box, you pick up the ball, there's a queue of you behind you. Yeah. You have and the keeper's on his line. You run towards him, you give him the ball, he plays a pass either left or right of him. You go either side, you have a shot. Marcel's pretty good at that. Green was pretty good at that. But then in a game, when you have got the pressures of the defenders and everything. Yeah. So these defenders in the way in a game, the keeper's not just on his line waiting for a shot from 25 yard. But then you look at United. United are number one for shots outside the box to inside the box ratio. So for this, for me, is you go, right, we spend the last 20 minutes of a match doing this. There, I think that is where we should probably be looking at some sort of pattern of play. You know, if that's getting to the... Let's just use City as an example. Go wide, go to the byline, pass it back to the penalty spot, pass it into the net. Because that's all the chances Raheem Sterling gets. You have to see Raheem beat three men and bury it, do you? No, he passes it into the net. That's every goal he scores. He does miss a lot of chances as well. But um, he gets that, five more. Yeah, that's what I was going to... I think 
I was critical of Martial after the Burnley game this week because he should have scored, um, especially in that first half. But then you look at the second half, he didn't have a sniff, didn't have a chance. We didn't create anything for him. And it's like, off a, you see some striker. I see Raheem Sterling miss, you know, the chance that Martial missed in the first half where he fell over as he tried to hit it. Yeah, one of them I've seen they issue. miss them so many times and but, it's like, they have two or three of them a game. Yeah, but three and minutes later, he's having another shot and he's put it yeah, away yeah, and yeah. no one's talking yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah, that happens all it's the like time. It's like Ronaldo. Yeah. It's like Ronaldo used to have so many shots and used to embarrass himself sometimes with some of the efforts, but... Ronaldo would have 10, 11, 12 shots a game and I'm not saying and Martial's not going to be the greatest player of all time, but he just might be. Um, yeah, like we we created that many chances. We don't create that many chances no more. But th that that warm up drills one thing. There's there's possible team selection ones, which is another thing. In game changing things. Yeah, I'd like to see him improve on that. But do you know what? Yo, Ollie didn't do that. Uh, sorry, Jose didn't do that. Uh, Louis Van Gaal didn't do that. He's he's playing with a Frankenstein of a squad at the moment. You no, know, is it any? I think what you saw last year, and this is what I always go back to that. Um, people like to talk about the new manager bounce like it's a real thing. It's not a real thing, otherwise Arsenal would have just had one and Watford would have had four this year. Uh, they might be getting one now, but maybe it's just actually that he's doing Darling, something totally different. What do you different. make of... Because we all saw Roy Keane's little clash with... Uh, was it Jamie Carragher? I seen it after the game. Uh, let Liverpool. me finish on this before oh, I leave sorry, my point. So I thought what we had at the time, you had... Um, you had Sanchez in the team you, you didn't actually have Lukaku in the team until it went tits up actually he was out of the team it was Rashford and, and uh, did that Arsenal game was, when, was it Lukaku's first start and yeah the, and then it all went tits yeah, up yeah. Um, so it was it was very much on Marshall and Rashford um, and, Lingard. And, and, and Lingard was a big part in it but Sanchez played a huge part in that uh, that period of time um, you had Pogba and you had Herrera Herrera was a real big key in that and I think he got injured against Liverpool was it in February so we had like eight weeks of it going brilliant with Herrera and then that was the first time we dropped points, was it? I think in Liverpool. I think it was around about then. Um, Burnley was the first time we dropped points. And then you know, we lose Herrera um, and now you start to see that inconsistency and you haven't replaced Herrera. You know, uh, having Herrera, um, having mm. a Matic, having a Pogba, we just don't have that. Even if McTominay is decent and we don't have him, you know, you've still not got people of the level of quality that you had with Herrera and whether he was right for this team or not right for this team or an issue or Don't not an issue perfect for this team Lukaku was a was a, a player that's got experience and bags left right and centre and he was a flat track bully well couldn't we do with a flat track bully you know he wasn't replaced Sanchez wasn't replaced Paul Pogba might as well not play for us now because he's been injured that long he's not been replaced you know under Herrera's not been replaced you've not even replaced someone like Fellaini as your total plan B player you know, there's so many players that have just been allowed to wash out. You know, uh, you've got a couple of players coming back from injury, Timbo and Bay, but we don't know what they're going to be like. Chelsea and Lampard, they're often called a young team that's going to be inconsistent. It's United are never described like that, by the way. These are lads in the same year as Marcus. No, but most of the team isn't young lads. No. Mason Mount, no, they're young enough. players. Are Tammy the Abraham, same age as Mason. who's had three no, or four Rashford. seasons of first team football. Beyond that, and What's the Tamori at the back? Tamori. Sorry, he's a great defender. But beyond that, and Reese James, none of them are young. Reese James has been out on loan for how long? We're gonna. You got Jorginho, Kovacic, Kante. Please give me one of them. And Barkley. Barkley will but start no, no, for United. No, 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 no. Barkley. No, 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 no. Right no. now, dog. Right he's now, dog shit, bro. Right now, he's Barkley starts for United. No, 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 no. I'm not saying he's not dog shit. No, no, but right no, now, no, he starts no, for United. No, 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 he's not. He doesn't. Of course, he does. He's not a better match. <laughs> no, he's he, not better than Matic. Plays, though. Ross Barkley's not better than Matic. He's not better than Fred. He's not better than me. He's shit. <laughs> Ross Barkley. He still starts what for us. What is he? He still starts for us. I'm how is he actually one of the biggest clubs in the country? Well, either way, he still starts for us. That's how bad we are at the minute. Yeah, but Chelsea's yeah. midfield is ridiculously good. And I thought that carried a lot of their results. Having someone like Kante in any team. Giroud and Batshui and Tammy. That's yeah. a, oh, God. It's yeah. not the greatest front three, well, but even it's like, a front three. William. William. We're dying for someone that Pedro. could hold something on the right hand side. Pedro. Yeah, there's so much experience in that team. So where's this young team? That, and it's like, do you feel that they're not. Others, Ali's judged by a higher standard. Yeah, I don't think the London Should teams be? have ever been um, treated fairly. I think they always get piped off. How's Harry Kane and MBE and Paul Scholes is Paul Scholes? How's fucking Nobby Styles? To be honest, not you, Sir Nobby Styles. Do you really want to be a member of the British Empire? It doesn't matter. It's the I same don't. standard. 
Like, how's Harry? What's Harry Kane done? Please offer me he won a fucking, turn it down. He won a golden boot by. I mean, the fact he even claimed that fucking back heel is outrageous. It, did, it wasn't a back heel. Your heel was planted. I Someone can't stand Harry him. Kane, you know. There's something. I'd love him if he was a Man United player, by the way. But I just mean, there's something about a guy that steals goals off people and he, like, has the whole club, like, a, like you know. Gotta get me that goal. Everybody. Look at the one that Send Rashford an email to the with, FA. Um, make sure you force Christian Eriksen to tell the FA that it was my goal and make sure, like it was like. Look at that one with Rashford hell, the other day or the other week with right? Tommy Eaton. Yeah, on goal, right? Tommy Eaton don't want that on goal. That doesn't happen if it's not for Marcus Rashford. Uh, it probably does, but I hear what you're saying. Like that was a stupid one. Yeah, I mean, well, if you're giving goals that have apparently come off Harry Kane's pube, then that's definitely Rashford's goal. You know what yeah. I mean? No, and, and Harry Kane would have got that. And then he would have been on... Unt- oh, let's talk about Rash's injury, man. This, this has left me a bit heartbroken, you know. And not, I, you know I don't care about England, but I'm gutted for his Euros. Because like, I know yeah. Rashford's had this... Had a summer where he's grafted. Can I just say before... Tunnel vision. Before the fucking comments do, oh, man, I got stitched up with this this weekend. <laughs> Did I get stitched up with this this weekend? Oh, uh, deleting them tweets? Yeah. They're gone. So can, can, you, about that. can you uh, explain what happened there? Please? Yeah, I had my pants down. Uh, obviously, I have. There a was connection. a dodgy account tweeting it first. Yeah, there was a dodgy account that tweeted it first. But they were right. <laughs> but they was right. Yeah. So I asked, let's just say, my contacts, which I don't think you may I or may def- not have the same surname as Marcus. Uh, I. Well, he doesn't. I'll just, right. Uh, I'll just say, look, I don't need to prove the connections I have to some United players. But let's just say that's because you're in the Glazers' pocket, though, right? Obviously, uh, I don't, I don't <laughs> doubt anything that's said on these. Um, and after all this came out, because I went, "What's the crack with this?" And he was like, "It's lies." So if it had said, "I can't say anything and don't say anything," I wouldn't have said anything. But he was like, "Nice no, lies." So I went, "All right, fuck it." Locked and loaded and went to work. <laughs> and uh, and then after it, it was like. And he's actually got in trouble because the club have gone, have you leaked that? And he was like, no. And I said to him, like, you want to fucking send out a WhatsApp message and go be like, clearly I fucking wasn't. Um, so, yeah, they didn't, the club... Uh, uh, next thing you're going to tell us, it on, really on, is Brandon Williams' Twitter account, right? Um, oh, no, he has got a Twitter account. He has got a Twitter account, <laughs> yeah. which by the time this is out, it'll probably be live. Uh, they're just waiting for it to get verified. I but I'll, so. it, come and give, I'll give it a shout probably today or tomorrow, but he is on Twitter now. That one definitely wasn't. Um, but yeah, the the whole what's it with Marcus, afterwards he was like, sorry. He goes, we didn't want it to leak. And he, go, he doesn't know where it's leaked from. It's not from them. So he's like, who who put it out there? And why did they put it out there? Who's running that account? What? No, I'm, well, I'm, to- I'm talking about the uh, the Rashford injury. Yeah, he's but like, the account that tweeted it, who's running it? Oh, I don't know. But then Henry Winter come out and think it. Even Ollie in the press conference said one thing, not in the press conference, a pre-match he said one thing and then after the match he's like, oh yeah, it's broke. Are you worried that we keep misdiagnosing players as injuries? No, Rash- because uh, Rashford, by, McTominay, by the sounds of it, it, they'd actually known about it for a little bit. So we know about it and we play him. But he's been playing, and some of this is on Marcus, to be honest with you. Some of no, this, but like, it's like... He played on since Sorry, February. but you have to take responsibility away from the player, and ultimately, they are multi-million pound assets to this club. Surely you don't put them... Yeah, yeah. Like, you, you don't do... It's like, it's like when we talk about... It's, I'm going to exaggerate a point to make a point. You know, when we talk about this racism issue in football, and they're like, the players should walk off. Why are we telling the players what... To, why aren't the referees and the FIFA saying, actually... We're going to take them off. Like we're put, we're giving the decision to the players. We shouldn't be doing that. We should be saying protect the players. Marcus, you fucking idiot! Like he would have played against Burnley. Oh, he would. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Rolled him out on a wheelchair. He would have been fine. He jumped like, up, played. Do you remember when he pulled out of um, England duty um, on the day of the game or the day before the game? Something along those lines. They knew he was injured going into it. Marcus is all of us, isn't he? If I get the opportunity to play, I'm fucking playing. Your legs hanging off. Yeah, but I'll do ten minutes. Do you know what I mean? That's all of us want to do that, and it's a it's a great attribute for him to have. But yeah, you're right. The medical staff and everybody else needs to to look at him seriously. Ultimately detrimental. But then if he's like, I feel great, and you can't scan but whatever the, it the, is. The talks are he had a fractured back. <laughs> you can scan that. Yeah. You can do like. I think it worsened with the bank. There was, the, the, I had a message sent to me from some, someone that was at the Hotel Football Media Day and we saw someone, I think it was Docker, apologies if I'm wrong, 
But someone tweeted saying he couldn't sit down at this media day. He had to stand up. That was bollocks. Because whoever was at that media day and interviewed them, DM me like, ignore that tweet. Don't share it because it's rubbish. Um, he was fine that day. No, so I, like, I spoke to people. There has been over-exaggerations. Um, where... One of the things I said to the people was, how was he walking around? And he went, just looks a bit stiff. I mean, he's a little bit stiff, but like, he's, you know, there's things he can and can't do. You know, and, and I know he wants to go to the derby on Wednesday. Um, and he went? No. <laughs> because th that was, I said, like, are you fucking mad? And he was like, no, I'm going to try and go in the box because if one person fucking jumps on him, let's say we won. I mean, I think it's more likely that I score the winner than we win, but fucking hell. If uh, if someone, can you imagine someone jumped on him and fucking mm. do another one of his vertebrae or something like that? I mean, it's oh, dodgy ground. next week if that happened. It's dodgy ground <laughs> where he is anyway, isn't it? So you got an apology? For all of us, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, but uh, either way, like, even if the contact is as good as it's ever going to fucking get, shit still gets wrong, doesn't it? Wow, mate, and I, do you know what? It won't be the last time as well. I still remember Moreno. I still remember Tony Cruz. I'm waiting, <laughs> I'm waiting. Um, think of a what did you make of Jason McAtee this week? He's a fucking wedge, isn't he? <laughs> Absolute. Prick. Do you know what? I was just going to try and have a look. Then he blocked me. I think about three years ago, and I can't remember why. And it was probably well justified, like, but uh, I he's can't a prick, though, isn't fuck. he? I, I mean, he's not the only one. I think we've, we've had Giggsy doing it and a few others. And I mean, we see the media come out and in support of Raheem Sterling. Um, when Raheem Sterling uh, came out with, with what he said recently, and we're doing it all over again. Um, just with a different target. It's really annoying to me. I understand criticism of Paul Pogba as a footballer for his performances. Totally understand it. But when they start doing character assassinations and talking about oh, what religious videos he's watching on, on like, it's just like, it's, it goes beyond beyond football for me. And it just knocks me a little bit sick to see well, it happen. And that we all sit back and accept it. Even though literally in 2019, Raheem Sterling came out and we all supported him. Do you know what I mean? It's. it's I've criticised him. I like to try and criticise him on things him, that's going on. I've criticised him about football or about his agent being annoying. Well, yeah, or, it's his agent you know, and or talking more about wanting else. to leave. But ultimately, he he's never done what Lukaku did. He's never done what Ashley Young did. Actually, fucking Nemanja Vidic also did. Harry Maguire cost eighty million. Has been given our armband for f doing fuck all. No one talks about his price. He played everyone on side against Burnley. We've got the Glazers doing the club over. Like, There's so much going on at the club, yet people want to talk about a player that hasn't played for five years. That for one me was, is uh, fucking mental. The McAteer one was mental. Five months, sorry, five years. Um, I was wondering where he was going with that. Because it was like, it, where's Milner and Henderson and Lalana? And I was like, Lalana? And I'm like, all right, you can Lallana, say Henderson. Lalana choked the under 23 player the other month. <laughs> Milner and Henderson, who before they won the Champions, sorry, Henderson before he won the Champions League, had won what? A, a championship promotion playoff or something like that. So now all of a sudden they're examples of of, of serial winners. You're talking about the four-time Serie A winning Champions League finalist, World Cup winning. The only thing you can level at him Paul is that Bill Pogba. He doesn't want to be here, and that annoys me because I mean, loyalty is nothing blame above him. nothing else for me. No, but either way, can you blame him? But it doesn't matter if I can blame can him. Can you not. blame him? Take your love for the club aside. I can't. If you're Paul Pogba, with the talent that he has, with the ability that he has, are you staying at Manchester United? Two words, Brian Robson. Are you staying at Man United? Bro, we can, we can do that. Brian Robson was the best if midfielder we were not in the fans world. Of Manchester, we even seen fans turn their back on the club at the moment. But if we were not emotionally attached to this club, we would be turning our well, back on That's a stupid them hypothetical because that's what fans don't do. Yeah, but this is... We gotta look at it from a realistic point of view. Manchester United are no longer right, look, a, a attract, attractive football's uh, not realistic. option to footballers. Footballers that, are, and unless, industry's not realistic. Unless they support Manchester United, or unless you're Daniel James coming from look, Daniel James coming is a decent squad player. But if we didn't sign him, he'd still be in the championship. Do you know what I mean? Unless we're signed those kind of players, the pull of Manchester United but isn't gonna is do it. Sometimes where attitude goes a long way. You were talking about attitude before on a, on a preview and the attitude not being right. Sometimes that can go down to 
whether people want to be here or not because that can totally affect how things go down in training how things go down in the match if you want to be here and you show that you want to be here Johnny, you're talking about the confidence that Liverpool have got and that the kids have got because everyone's pulling in the same direction you've got one guy that you kind of go imagine being in a team meeting where you're telling the players and I don't even know if this happens but if you're telling the players like lads here's what we're going to do over the summer we're going to try and do this that and the other and then next year we're going to hopefully do this but you 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 can see Pogba sort of fucking drifting off looking out the window like I'm going to be in Juventus mate or you know, I'm going to be in Madrid mate like it, it affects it now it might only affect it half a percent or one percent and I don't think he's I having the you. sort of impact that Jason McAteer ha- thinks he's having in the change rooms and what Jason McAteer said was absolutely But this is bonus. a reasonable football criticism this is a reasonable football criticism and I'm not saying anybody that criticises Paul Pogba is racist but when you're talking about character and you're making all these sly little yeah Jason McAteer is a bell whiff uh, has always been a bell with and um, he can fuck off so can Neil Custis and we'll get into him another day but um, yeah I think so tell us about Neil Custis no it's probably... in the middle of him this is true as well so fuck yours and you work for the sun so I can say what I want I was in even mid- if I was lying it doesn't matter I was in the middle Neil of Custis in the middle of his uh, fat camp with Louis Van Gaal yeah middle of his fat camp same week when he had all that going on me and producer Chris saw him, be in, now, right? saw him in an airport at about 7am drinking about six wine miniatures fat alcoholic mess and you write for the sun and he tries that door preachy sorry mate can't. I don't know what point I was trying to make but fuck the sun um, yeah I mean I saw something today which was just factually incorrect which was um, he's obviously now like Neil Ashton's been hired by United as a PR fucking hitman uh, and he's gone straight to work by just going straight to everyone that he was on Sunday supplement with because I've seen Ollie Oak talking Oops, absolute fucking ball bags. Alice Band wearing twats. And, and Neil Custis with the, Neil Custis has deleted everything he's ever said about the Woodward and Glazers because we looked into it this morning and he's only ever tweeted three things about Woodward and three things about the Glazers and they were all this morning. So uh, it's not like you two to, to uh, delete so tweets. The fact Steve. that he's uh, he are you telling me that w- uh, Custis has never said in the words Woodward or Glazer on Twitter? Anyway, so uh, this morning he says. Um, let me find it because I want to be accurate here. Can we search for the word athletic in his mentions as well, please? That'd be great. Oh, uh, that, that's entertaining. Some some speed round while you're looking for that. He really is um, <clears throat> speed pressing round. his fucking nose against speed the window, round. looking in at everybody. Speed round. Right. Will Fernandez ever happen? Anyway, so... Uh, speed round. Neil, uh, shut up, I've got a thing here. Neil Custis, at least Woodward has offset a lot of that cash by modernising and expanding a commercial department that was left to gather dust before him, hence the lack of investment in the eight years under the Glazers prior to his appointment at Old Trafford. A couple of things. Uh, Woodward took over in 2005, and from 2007, uh, he was in charge of the commercial department, Neil. You're a fucking journalist. How about do a little bit of fucking to research? Fair, Neil Costis has less followers than me, and us probably mentioning him on this video will give him the most hits he's had this week. Right, he's will put, love that. Right, he's tweeted, just so you blocked me ages ago anyway, because I asked him if he knew what the word exclusive meant. Um, <laughs> what about truth? Did you ask him what that meant? <laughs> Back when um, I was writing blogs, I had an actual exclusive, uh, obviously as a, a friend of um, Patrice Everett, knew that he was going to Juventus ahead of time, so we did it on our blog. And then about three weeks later, he had an exclusive in the sun. So I tweeted him and said, do you know what exclusive means? And he was like, am I supposed to look at every fucking blog about Manchester United? And I said, well, you could just Google it, ever at Manchester United, because okay. it's number one. Any in January the- signings? Anyway, um, I ain't finished on this fucking ball sack yet. So, modernising and expanding a commercial department that was left to gather dust before him. Manchester United, prior to the Glazers coming in, were the most fucking um, powerful fucking financial institution. But it all started from Michael Knight, didn't it? His I mean, impact. not really. Well, not he really. did kind of plant the seed. After we, let's be real. After the PLC days, he planted yeah, the seed, and everyone was like, All right, we we made some to the serious side, commercial strides. Um, but every club since 2005 has either five x, four x, or three x their income, and we've only about doubled it. So um, make of that what you will. United should be doing like a billion pound a year turnover now if they had any brains. All right, does Ali see the season at? Yeah, I think he does. Any January signings? Yeah, probably. Are we going to ever sign Hernandez? Fernandez? Hernandez? Hernandez. I don't know. I, I said 9.9 out of 10 last week. I'm down For about, this month? Yeah, I'm down about 7.5 out of 10 now. For this month? Yeah. For this month? Yeah. 
we ain't signing him. Um, do you still have faith in him? Who's him? Who's Ollie. him? Ollie. Ollie. Him, Eric. Ollie. Oh, oh. Uh, yeah, because manager that loses all of his fucking players suddenly doesn't look as good. Is this, the weakest, is this the weakest squad in your lifetime? Yes. Bear in mind you are 53. I'm 36, but I look good for it, don't I? He does indeed. Um, are United going to win a trophy this season? No. Um, what do you think of the Glazers? Cunts. What do you think of Woodward? Cunt. While we're on Woodward, uh, Woodward, if you ever want to do an interview for us, you can sit right in between Do this. you know what? This is why he's a cunt, right? His <laughs> absolute genius way of palming someone this is. Um, he done it to me as well, by the way. I was at the Player of the Year Awards in a tuxedo, looking mighty fine. I'd have definitely shagged myself. But I'm at a Player of the Year Awards. He did when he went home. Um, <laughs> married, mate, don't need to. The, uh, the, the, you're just allowed to just mingle with every fucker, weren't you? Timbo gave me a hug. It's like at the UNICEF dinner. When yeah, I was... yeah, you just get to just fucking do what you want. So Timbo walks past me and I just went, Timbo? And he, he turned around and he went, yes, and gave me a fucking bear hug. Like, nearly broke my spine. And I went, do you watch full-time you know And he me... went... Of course. You know that makes me feel jealous, right? Do you remember when we met Tim Bone, producer Nick, outside Craven Cottage, and he gave me a little hug? Loves giving out. If you're not had a Tim Bone hug, you ain't lived. Anyway, so I went and spoke to Lou Van Gaal. I got a little, um, I think I did it on Snapchat, I think, yeah, at the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, remember that. So we went in the FA Cup, and he was, he was smashed. And he was like, yes. <laughs> and we did, so he was right. Um, and then I saw Woodward sitting there, and I thought, fuck it. He's already done an interview with United We Stand. I was like, let me fucking steam in there and see if he'll do it. And I said, uh, Hello, Mr. Wood. Uh, you know, I'm from Full Time Devils, and he went, I know you are. And I just crumbled then because I was like, shit, I had this whole speech planned in my head. And I went, give us an interview then. <laughs> Me and Nick went up to I him. I ain't finished. Like, Fucking carry on. He's been going on about it. He, uh, he goes, okay. And I was like, shit, that was too easy. Uh, and he went, there's my secretary's email address. Email him Monday. I went, all right, I will. So I emailed him Monday morning, 9 01. Not to look, to look too keen. And uh, they just got, Ed's not doing interviews. You're like, <laughs> Fuck's sake. Anyway, there's enough on him, innit? Like, the opportunities have been there for him. We've tried to get him on for years, and trust me, if I got the opportunity with him, uh, I would ask him the questions we all wanted to ask him, but um, I don't think that opportunity... If we get him on as well, him. I don't want to... Uh, I'd do it on my own. I've got the balls to do it. I can, I can, I can do an interview easy. What's he going to say piece. to me? But You know, I'm going to go interview you, and that was a bit hard. I'd love it to be like, at the Nag Z, me, you and Jay sat around him. Proper interrogation. You realise that's never going to happen. If he ever agreed to it, it would probably be on club property so they could throw you out the first first time you was like, so fucking 600 million. But anyway, like, anyway, anyway, we're done. And you'd be like, fucking hell. What I love you're gonna have to, What you have to do, I think you have to treat it like um, like taming a horse. So you've got to give it a, a carrot and, and stroke the side of its head and, and like not look at it dead on. So you've got to feed don't him one with Don't stroke me like, when I'm on my ear when i got that in my face. Are we the biggest club in the world, Ed? Please don't. Yeah, there you go, let's have a munch on that carrot. And then he'll be like, are we making any signings this summer, red? Nope, oh, too much. Okay, What's your favourite colour, red? Yeah, yeah. Oh, favourite colour. There you go, he's coming back around again. Um, it, it, loans are great, aren't they, Ed? <laughs> yeah, fucking men. Anyway, you, right, you fuck. And then you have to wait till it gets plugged. Give me an headlock like that. And then, yeah, and then never... The get, thing is, though... Never get another interview with anyone. We're talking to the <laughs> monkey and not the organ grinder. Oh, yeah, because they That's don't That's the same, talk. right? Yeah. Yes, yes. it is, yeah. Same. I don't think monkeys play organs. Okay. But yeah, you're right. I mean, you're never talking to them. And supposedly one of them's vetoed the fucking move. You know what I ate, yeah? this You know what I fucking ate, yeah? I've been talking about them since 2013. We've been getting blocked off by the club since, since we started Full Time Devils, yeah? And we still get called Glazer Puppets, which is funny. I'd love to know what access and you think I'm getting at the club. That, secondly, that I get. But, fucking I mean, ate them. Just watch any video we're in. And like, oh, in fact, no, I'm going to set you a challenge. You do me a fucking solid. Go and find a video where either me or him have said anything fucking positive about any of them. Ever. And I hated it because... And I'll buy you an ice cream I remember in it. Germany, I was pissed off at some fans at the Wolfsburg game because they were taking pictures with the bastards. Oh, that, someone fucking put that in that article today. I've I, I found me talking about the fucking... I was arguing with people well, in 2010, be here all day. 2011 by people going, they've been good owners, look what we've won since, and you're like, Christ! Yeah, remember, remember, remember when I used to say... Remember, remember... People used to say that to us. I do remember, yep, yeah, that's... That's people did say that to me. I literally, yeah. I know yeah. you're thinking, Steve, you don't argue with people on the internet, do you? And I'm like, well, you know what? It's happened once or twice. People fucking like 
that like a lot of and actually more people than you'd fucking think. In in a nutshell, people on the whole are all right. There's a lot of fucking knobs around. Right. There. What number is Bruno Fernandez going to wear at oh, United? Oh fucking I don't know, 400. Sweet. Guys, thank you for watching. House and McCullough and Censored. Get your questions in for next time if you want. Probably won't answer them, but they're there if we don't have any ideas. Um, Steve, anything you want to plug apart from your butt? <laughs> <laughs> no, the butt's fine. Make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe. See you later.